Welcome to this third and final day here in Tbilisi, Georgia. This 2022 Tbilisi Judo Grand Slam has produced some amazing judo so far, and there's more to come in this final block, I can tell you, on this third and last day of competition. This wonderful city with its diverse architecture has played host to this unique competition yet again, and Georgia are on a roll as they lead the medals coming into this final block of the last day. Now, five more weight categories to be contested tonight. Lots of Georgians in the finals or fighting for third. And all the medal matches in my, uh, are going to be introduced by my co-commentator, Sheldon Franco-Rooks. Good afternoon, Neil, and good afternoon to everyone at home. The first of the bronze medal contests in the under 90 kilo category features Maxime Gal Ingiap Hambu of France. He's up against Georgi Papinashvili of Georgia. It'll be Ingiap Hambu in the white Chirogi Papinashvili in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Jose Ordones of Honduras. Well, the world rankings came up there, so you can have a look at them. They play a big part in uh, qualification for the Olympic Games as we get close to the Olympic Games. And uh, qualification starts, I think it is in August of this year, so two years prior to the Games. And uh, as you can see there, Papinashvili there of Georgia, he's just about to step out, 264. Now, he's never had a trip out before. Uh, and, uh, well, so much depth in Georgia that it's difficult for him to get out, but uh, gives them a great chance here because four in every weight category, possibility that they can compete. Uh, and uh, the Georgians have put everybody out, haven't they? Yeah, they've got almost their strongest strongest four in each of the weights. Just in the plus 100 kilo category, we haven't got Guram Tusishvili. Of course, in the 90s, we haven't got the current Olympic champion either. So a couple, couple short, but they are so strong anyway, so much depth that they're able to fill the spots adequately, even when the top men are missing. And they have a very unusual style of doing things, I can tell you. Niam Hambu of France. Well, everybody in the uh, audience there, paying for a score for the Georgian, but uh, look at Niam Hambu there, it's his technique here. Nothing uh, from the Georgian that could uh, possibly look as if it's gonna control anything. The Mongolian Grand Slam, that's when the uh, qualification starts. He had a close one in Gyap Hambu. He just escaped. He was on the edge of going out. And I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was one of the Georgians that he overcame, wasn't it? I'm going to have a look and make sure. But it was pretty close. Yeah, well, it, there were Georgians everywhere in the 90s minus 100s and their, their heavyweights and uh, you'll see that they'll be uh, featured in almost every single category. They've got a stronger men's team than they have a ladies team. Uh, they're trying to put that right of course. They've got a ladies program going on at the moment because it's mixed, uh, mixed team events for the Olympic Games and World Championships. And, uh, of course, when they competed as men, they were always con uh, contending the world and Olympic... Uh, well, no, not the Olympics, but the world titles, of course, and the European team championships. But uh, now it's mixed. They've got to put two world-class ladies in there as well. Three, sorry, haven't they? Yeah, three. Because six-man teams. Six-person teams. And Gyap Hambu has not had the best of draws. Gogul Ladze in round two who he defeated 
He lost to Pirelli in the quarter-final, and then he had to face Ushangi Margiani in the repechage. And now for the bronze medal match, Papinashvili. This is his third Georgian for the day. <laughs> yeah, I'll just work my way through the Georgian squad. No. And you see that overhand grip there from the Georgian. Uh, well, we did have it uh, not long ago. Just uh, It's only been changed, uh, actually, just. Uh, that uh, any unorthodox grips, which is uh, sleeve lapel, you had to attack immediately. Now, they get a little bit of time to set things up. But bear in mind that if he's got that cross grip and he doesn't do anything with it, he will get shedoed and he'll get a penalty. He might just get it now. He's not. He's going to get away with it. A little over a minute and a half left to go. See, well, they're not going to let him just sit there. But he came in with an attack just in time. Well, Nia Pambu also had the belt there and he had it for a long time and that just a little bit too long. Uh, and again, it's unorthodox, the grip. And uh, you can't just hold the belt. You've got to go in. So, uh, yeah, neither one of them have a penalty on the board. Uh, we'll point out the penalty system as we carry on here. Uh, for the non-judoka out there, May aim is to throw them onto their back, uh, arm lock or strangle for a submission, or hold them on their back for 20 seconds. They have this very low center of gravity, the uh, Georgians, and of course, a lot of it stems from the Russian style of wrestling that they practice, and that was a good one there. Left seeing Aggie. Well, I, I thought, uh, I'm not so sure. He might have grounded before then, maybe. Uh... So what happens is now, uh, you can't throw off the ground, but uh, to ground it and for it to be classed as groundwork, both shoulders have to hit the floor. He was absolutely right, the referee there. But uh, did he get the landing? So uh, both elbows hadn't gone onto the mat. So, uh, and he gets a penalty as well for his trouble. Yeah, so Shido for grabbing the leg. Well, a little bit of an inexperience here, isn't it? I mean, you can see that he probably hasn't had that many international tournaments, certainly not of this caliber, any not a grand slam. Uh, all the crowd up there not quite understanding the rules, I'm, I'm thinking. There's that right arm over the side again. And uh, Nayap Hamdu doing a good job here. Thirty seconds left. This would be a good win for him, wouldn't it? I mean, a, a good medal to win. You beat three Georgians in Georgia, in front of a home Georgian crowd, and you've had a good day. Yeah, he's had to work very hard for this. Just got to keep moving. Stay on his bike. And he just uh, threw a, a Shido away there. So if both your feet go out like that, then you get Shidoed. You get a Shido penalty. He's got to give it, the referee. So a good win for Niap Hambu of France. And uh, well, his world ranking 39, probably go up, uh, I, I would say after this. And remember that the Olympic qualification hasn't started yet, but what it does do if you've got a higher world ranking is that uh, for the next event, it will give you a, a higher seeding in for that event. So uh, that's the idea. It's a, a kind of a, a roll on situation. And Gap Hambu will be able to squeeze a couple of highlights out of this one. But as Neil said, good result for him and an extremely difficult day having to get past three Georgians to take a medal. Well, I think they're, you know, they are struggling a little bit, aren't they, for the men. The women are flying and uh, the men... Wazari for that. B 
be interesting just to see where he actually lands. And uh, just if he, it looked uh, went quick uh, at speed, it looks like he just went completely onto his uh, front. But he went side first and then onto his front. And he had the hand involved in blocking the leg at the same time. So he, a double trouble for him. He gave away the score. Well, that's what he, uh, yeah, that's what he gave the penalty away for, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And uh, you've got to bear in mind, you, you've got to say, well, why did he get that Shido? And the reason is it could have been up on that yeah. if he hadn't grabbed the Good leg. leg. Yeah. We come now to the second of the bronze medal matches in the under 90 kilo category. Mukai Shoichiro of Japan goes up against Gennaro Pirelli of Italy. It's Mukai in the white Jerogi Pirelli in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Vitali Sulima of Ukraine. We always seem to get new uh, people coming through and new competitors being blooded at the Grand Prix, Grand Slams. They've either come up from the juniors or they've uh, get their chance because uh, the number ones in their weight category have retired and uh, this man here I'm not talking about him Mukai we've seen before but uh, certainly his Italian uh, uh, opponent there 21 years of age Pirelli uh, of Italy and uh, he's stepping out here he's uh, just popped underneath the top 100 in the top 100 in the category and uh, looking to go better than that Junior World Champion, and no, sorry, seventh in the world, uh, third in the World Championship, Junior Worlds, Gennaro Pirelli. And uh, that's what I'm on about. You know, they get their chance then to uh, step out into the seniors. Mukai of Japan. He didn't make the Japanese team, did he? It, it, it was uh, uh, for the last Olympic Games. They were a little bit stuck uh, as to who they were going to send. Not sure if it was Mukai that went. Bear in mind that Japanese, uh, in most of the categories, had contenders for the Olympic title uh, or the world title. So uh, when they did their trials, they sent the number two team to the world championships got five or six gold medals and then they sent their number one team to the olympics some in the weight uh, same weight categories and uh, they won the olympics they they won more medals they won nine gold medals so that's definitely a penalty there to pirelli so he stepped out the area got to stay within the area three shidos which is that little yellow uh, flag that you can see on there and uh, three of those it's all over Honsokomaki disqualification biggest uh, Japanese team we've seen but they're uh, the people that uh, they've sent definitely uh, so it was Mukai that went yeah M Mukai did get the Olympic slot but I, I know that they were um, they were putting a couple out weren't they different ones was Harry scored there uh, to Mukai Kosoto, Yoko Sotemiwaza and uh, onto his back there, not quite the Ippon. Pirelli's not, you know, got someone at the end of his hands that he's got to be fearful of. Mukai is not your typical Japanese. He's going to give you an opening because he's got an unusual and a slightly unorthodox way of going about things okay you know he's got the lovely throwing styles and things like that but he just seems to get sidetracked sometimes he, he loses focus and yeah, he, he makes mistakes doesn't yeah, he okay yeah because he's too he's too open for a japanese fighter he's a little bit loose anyway he did get the the spot but he he kind of let them down a bit. He lost out to Tot Christian early on. 
and he didn't even end up in the repechage. You know, I mean, that's got to be quite telling for well, he for was the Japanese of, at home. One of the only ones, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, exactly. Was, that wasn't fighting for a medal. But they're still spending money on him. So Wazari ahead. Two Wazaris make the Ippon. The Ippon is the main aim, remember. And uh, if he throws him just on his side again, that will uh, be two Wazaris and that will make the Ippon. Pirelli's got no choice here. The time is running out so quickly. He's got to open up. And he's been a little bit tentative. I, I don't know whether it's he fears the... The reputation or he's looked at the the badge there and thought, oh, I've got a Japanese and a bronze medal match and you shouldn't at this this level he's got already to lose has yeah. he really just uh, have a little go he's past the stage of being intimidated just by reputation or the the sight of the Japanese flag you know got to get a bit more upright here as well into the last 50 seconds you was already down Every second just, you know, takes it further and further away from you. Nothing to lose now. And uh, Pirelli might as well, have, like you said, just go for it. Just uh, went on to the belt then. Yeah, and you can see Ruka is not that comfortable when he gets moved around a bit. No, definitely not. He's not. He's, uh, he'll be glad to see the backer today, I'm sure. So Mukai is going to get uh, a penalty now for blocking out. Yeah, Pirelli hasn't tested him. He'll be happy with that. He's on the belt here, Mukai. Definitely on the run as well, isn't he? So... It's going to be a second penalty, is it? Are they going to give it? And Mukai will be happy to take it with 10 seconds. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Four or five seconds you know, left to go. Plenty of time. Hasn't done enough here, Gennaro Pirelli, to really test Mukai. Mukai comes away with a bronze medal at the Grand Slam. Is he happy? No, he didn't come here looking for a bronze medal. He wanted to win it. But he'll, t he'll take the bronze. He'll go away with that medal. Pirelli for all the work that he did early on got this far and then couldn't come up with something more testing against an opponent who I thought would be you know well suited to Pirelli's style but it just never materialized for the Italian he looks absolutely out on his feet doesn't he uh, Mukai it is, I have to say, it is quite warm in this stadium. It is. It is uh, I mean, we are sweltering, yeah. so goodness yeah. knows what it must be like out there. And uh, I don't think there's a, a lot of air conditioning in this stadium. It's difficult. No, we used it, up, we used it all up on day one. <laughs> I think we did. Blowing a gale here on day one. It wasn't, wasn't far yeah, off was, the uh, Ippon, was it really, that? <laughs> it, it was neatly done. And if I'm not mistaken, he was caught with something similar himself, wasn't he? I he think, was, yes, he was, yeah, he yeah. was. Look how he ducks underneath there, uses the head to drive. And, uh, yes, you can see quite clearly that it is uh, only a Wazari. First fight final just about to come up then. Well, I think they need livening up a little bit this crowd. Well that's about to happen because we come now to the final of the under 90 kilo category. To Christian of Hungary goes up against Becker Gviniashvili of Georgia. It'll be Tut in the white Jadogi Gviniashvili in blue and the referee in the middle for this one is Lim Kihei of the Republic of Korea I'm just looking there at the head-to-heads between these two 
eight times they've fought. 7-1 to uh, Gavini Ashvili coming into this, which considering, and I'm telling you now that uh, uh, Toth Christian is uh, one of the most consistent in the category. Gavini Ashvili of Georgia, well, he, he was, and uh, he's working his way back up there, but uh, this man here is coming in here knowing that uh, the man in front of him has beaten him quite a few times, but uh, will it make a difference here? It might. <laughs> Home ground uh, crowd. Yeah, it, it doesn't make for attractive reading, does it, when you look at the head-to-head. 7-1 -head. in favour in favour of Guineashvili. And remember that this is the number one seed here, isn't it? Tot Christian. Yeah, it, uh, well, you know, look at their world rankings and Toth Christian is uh, number three in the world rankings at the moment. But, you know, don't always look at that. Like I say, um, uh, Gavini Ashvili at the moment is working his way back up uh, and, and working his way back to form. He's the number two seed this morning. One versus two. Seeding has worked out. The only thing that hasn't worked out for Toth Christian is he's got to face his nemesis, really. 7-1. Wouldn't have thought yeah. that. But he is clever, isn't he? He's a clever fighter, yeah. Toth Christian. And uh, so he will be trying to tie up the sleeves and uh, just prevent Gaviniashvili from getting any kind of pickup. Just out of interest, I wonder where that one win was. It was at the Junior World Championships. Can you imagine that? all the way back in Fort Lauderdale in 2014. Uh, well, here they are. A lot of them, haven't they? They've come through juniors where they fought each other and then they come through to the seniors and uh, right the way to the end of their careers. So that, uh, I think, is a, a penalty up there to Toth. It was as well. A long way back. Big arm over now from Gaviniashvili. Well, he's very defensive, isn't he, Toth? You can see that, but that's normal. Oh, that's a score. Brilliant Ashiwaza. He's been brilliant with that Ashiwaza all day. Sticky foot Ashiwaza there, and he just sticks on the foot and drives. How often have we seen him do that today? He's done it to time and time again. Just lands him on his side and then on to the back. A few in the crowd wanting to see a nip on, but... Yeah, well, what happens is you pick up the foot to try and avoid it, and you keep contact with the foot and then drive. And then you can't put the foot down. But uh, it's, it's brilliant, and it's worked for him all the way through today. Halfway through the contest, Vinyash really leads by Wazaria. Single Shido against the Hungarian, as he just looks to avoid going off the competition area there. Best I've seen him for a little while, actually, Gavini Ashvili, I have to say. Uh, and now piling on the pressure here. Tottenham doesn't know what to do with it. Quick look up at the clock there, but that's uh, too far away to start running away. One minute 39. Funny thing is, I mean, that's taking 20, 20 seconds off the clock. How, quick, how quickly did that go? They started up at two minutes. Half a minute has already gone. They've just had a couple of gripping up. I mean, this is all good for Gviniashvili here. That clock is running far too quickly for Toth Christian's liking. It's going to take a chance in a minute, and I, I tell you that uh, will be a mistake with this man. That arm round the back again. There's the hips. Oh, dear me. 
Big Ogochi movement, massive hit movement. 108 left on the clock. Yeah. It's just Sec disappearing. Seconds ticking away. Good fight. Two Shido's now up to top. He's behind on attacks as well. He's just manhandled him here. Now he's got to go in there. He's got that cross grip. <laughs> David Kevkishvili looking on an interested party as ever when it comes to high performance Georgian judo. Out of their seats, all of them. That big arm over again. And again, he's all over top. Has another look at the clock. Still just over 30 seconds to go. He's gone. He knows it. He's had a look down. Yep. So it's all over. Gaminiasvili wins the gold and the crowd are on their feet. Well, that's 8-1. <laughs> wow, that's how we want to see it. Brilliant stuff from both of these. And Tot always the absolute gentleman. Well, if you think about it, they've had... What, if, they, if they fought as juniors back in 2014... I mean, they've been going at it for a long time. We said that it was 7-1. That was eight contests. And there's, the, there's number nine. It's not as though they don't know each other. And those are the nine that have been in the middle. What about all the ones at training camps? <laughs> plenty, <laughs> plenty of those. You can bet, bet your life. Over the years. Well, a terrific start for the Georgian home fans. There's the Kouchi there, Kosoto, sorry. Uh, and he just uh, goes onto the leg there. Look at that, Kosoto drives it. That stick, sticking foot there, making sure that he just runs it through there in order to get the momentum. And then his hands, on all the occasions I've seen him doing it, look at his hands here. Look at them drive, look at the control he has. He knows exactly where he wants him, and he places him right there. Do you know, Neil, you said something that I think is really important, that this is the best that we've seen him for quite a long time. Uh, Vinayashvili has always been an exciting and a powerful fight, and I really underline that powerful thing. But here, we saw some touch. There was some finesse, and I would never have labelled Becker Gviniashvili a, a, a technician with finesse he was just a power man but today some real yeah, yeah, finesse some yeah, nice touch. the techniques are, are lovely yeah absolutely yeah. and with the feet you know it's always a little bit like watching a boxer uh, with a nice jab there before he hits with the big one and um, uh, that um, is exactly what we've seen there really good with the feet sets it all up uh, and it's scored majorly for him all the way through the day so brilliant stuff and then of course he's been putting the big hips across as well we come now to the first of the bronze medal contests in the under 78 kilo category natalie powell of great britain goes up against audrey chemio of france it's powell in the white jadogi chemio in blue in the referee in the middle for this one is gostini balash of hungary yeah, well, these two have fought each other five times as well. This is the sixth time these have fought. And uh, Chimeo, of course, the former Olympic silver medalist from London. And uh, she's not, she's only the, well, I think she's ranked number three in France at the moment, but still getting chances out there. And uh, Natalie Powell here with a beautiful technique in the repechage there in the uh, final repechage match massive technique and uh, here she is against uh, somebody she's fought quite a few times before I think Natalie Powell as well looking to qualify for the next Olympic Games and this is her third Olympic run as well
I think Chimeo was Olympic silver, wasn't it, in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, she was a bronze medalist uh, in the... In London. Uh, yeah, in London. Yeah, a couple of medals in the bag for one of the French favourites, a lover in Paris. Well, you know, the amazing thing was is that uh, prior to that Olympics, she'd only been doing judo about five years. Yeah, the coach... That was, was London was, Olympics. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But she had the stuff... Had the stomach for it. Beck, um, not Becker, Zabeda Rekviashvili was saying yesterday, albeit a little bit early and a different kind of thing, he said, my son hasn't got the stomach for it. He doesn't want it. <laughs> he said, you have to be hungry yes. for judo. And, I, and I've given him too much. <laughs> it's too much food. He's got too, he's, he's, he's got too much. You know, PlayStation and all sorts of stuff. So. Well, Powell's got to come back into this now. She's got to take the initiative because she's a uh, Shido down. It's uh, Chimeo just ahead on the attacks. Now Powell is going to go to work. Big left hand over the top there, trying to control the head. I'm talking about the Ashi was up from Becca Gviniashvili. Well, this lady here, Ch Chimeo, absolutely clattered the Japanese favourite in Paris in 2011 in the World Championship final. Oh, look at that! She's done it! Whoa. Powell's done it! I think that was Ippon. Uh, that, for me, was an Ippon. And Powell needs to just get down there, hold her down, and uh, work to get that leg out. Oh, it's been changed to Ippon. Yep, Natalie right. Powell throws her for Ippon. And that was a great win for Natalie Powell. Great opportune stuff. And like you said, real class there. You know, class opposition. Absolutely. This has always been the frustrating thing when watching <laughs> Natalie Powell. That, you know, she can beat the top players. And, and, and beat them well. She's thrown well today. Mark Earl there, yeah. just uh, working hard with uh, Natalie Powell. And like you said, you know, just sometimes it goes amiss, doesn't it, against uh, players that you wouldn't think she'd lose against. And then she goes and does that uh, to the likes of Chimeo. Have another look at this. Sasai Sulikumiash and uh, right the way onto her back. Cleanly onto her back. Look how she blocks, look how she lifts, look how she projects. And that was a beautiful technique. And then the, the finish there was uh, superb with the hands. Knew exactly where she wanted her. And she went over easy there, didn't she, Chimeo? It's a real surprise. Well, we, we've seen Natalie throw like that before. Really nice movement when everything is working well. Mark Earl thought it was Zippon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. So a medal for Great Britain in the under 78 kilos category. Coming up next, the second of the bronze medal contest in the under 78 kilo category. Yelisaveta Litvinenko of Ukraine goes up against Karen Stevenson of the Netherlands. It'll be Litvinenko in the white jadogi. Stevenson in Blue, the referee in the middle for this one is Turbat Ensetek of Mongolia. Was it yesterday that I picked out yes. uh, Natalia Chistiakova? And today I did mention Yelisaveta Litvinenko. I mean, it's not rocket science. These are two incredible juniors on the way up. Kejau Nabali accompanying Litvinenko out to the to Tami and she really has been you know she's just growing it's still early days for her still junior but there's just something that says that first of all she's got the stature it, it, it's, it's a lot like Anna Maria Wagner you could tell four years ago that Wagner was going to be a handful because you know she was physically ready for the weight category well Litvinenko who, who has not long since moved up from 70
to under 78 you know just looks like the the the, the right size and build for like this weight category like you say it's the shape isn't it and yeah. also stance as well but stevenson has it as well and uh, this looks like it's going to be a lively affair here now stevenson looking for the hold down and uh, straight away she can just pull her that little bit there Lithienko just managing to uh, not go onto her back there she just needs to stay there and uh, if it's not going to be an offside no. commie the uh, referee will stand it up giving plenty of time yeah. for it though they yeah. have been told as well uh, give time for it to develop if you think it's going to end in it on let it carry on so Lithienko has to be a little bit sharper getting up Let's have a look at the transition there. Sumageshi first of all, and then Stevenson straight on for the Sangaku turn. Litvinenko's got nice, as she was, and a really lovely faint. She just shows to the front and then around the back. Just a lovely stance, I have to say, Litvinenko, and, uh, and then that nice little sassai there that yep. she does off it. Beautiful. She's still long, young, she's learning her craft here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, again, you can't do that. Yeah. You can't snatch away and pull yeah. away. Uh, you've got to snatch away and make sure you either keep the grip or that you go forward immediately and then attack off it really looks ugly now when you see it yeah just well pulling away and the thing is i like it i i, I must admit yeah, I mean, we've got a great chance yeah. now because you've got more possibilities with the uh, with the um kumakata with the gripping strategies take what you like take what you like a little bit longer yeah. and uh you know if it's the throwing opportunity you've got time to operate it but if you've just got that grip and you're good at kumakata say for example you're blocking somebody out then you get the penalty and that's fair enough i think so Lithinenko, I think, needs just something over her right flank. We haven't seen her attacking that way yet. We've seen her do the sasai, but uh, finding it difficult against Stevenson. She doesn't want to attack that front leg, that's for sure. And I think she'll come unstuck if she does attack it. She's um, falling behind and attacks here. Yeah, possibility of a second penalty up here for Lithienko. Lithien Litvinenko. Litvinenko. Just taking too long to, to get into it. I'll put herself in a difficult position with a minute and a half left to go and two penalties on the board. She always fancies herself as, as being able to throw anyone. That's the thing. So she doesn't worry about the penalties and all of a sudden they've caught up with her got to get back in too close to the edge as yeah. well she's getting backed up all the time i thought that went against the arm there so, but, so uh, did stevenson <laughs> yeah i think so yeah she just pushed there doesn't she didn't she when yeah. they were in a standing position and broke that off and Stevenson picks up a penalty coming up to the last minute this bronze medal match the really has done what you know that's that's the annoying thing we haven't really seen her get into anything she's and Stevenson the third time she's attempted uh, Sumigeishi and yet we, we, have, we can't say that, that Litvinenko has done anything except shape towards some kind of, you know, unidentifiable as she was. So it, it's, a, it's a disappointing performance, unfortunately, from Litvinenko to get this far and then not come up with the goods. I wouldn't be surprised if they called that a false attack to be honest didn't look as though it was going anywhere 
She's lucky to get away with that. Half a minute to come up with something a little bit special to take the contest away from Stevenson because at the moment it looks as though there's going to be a third penalty come up, if not a score, and there it is. I think that's going to yeah. be it, isn't it? There's yeah. the Wazari. 17 seconds, and uh, you could see that it was clearly on the side with the landing there. You always look at yeah. the top part of the landing and uh, not the bottom part. Don't look at the uh, legs. Look at where the back is in the side. Well, she'd been able to turn off the first two or three, but not that one. And Stevenson must be thinking, well, that wasn't that difficult, was it? <laughs> you know, I mean, didn't get troubled. I never looked as though I was going to come under any serious attack. I thought maybe I'd have to work a bit harder for this one. But unfortunately, Litvinenko not able to put Karen Stevenson to the test. It's Stevenson of the Netherlands who comes up with the second of the bronze medals in the under 78 kilo category. Yeah, like you say, a little bit disappointing. But it, it, it's all experience, of course it is, but uh, you've got to come out and give it your all. And I think uh, a lot of it is about as well. A little bit like going down the right and the left wing as a football analogy there, but you've got to go both sides. It doesn't necessarily mean you've got to do the same technique both sides, but you've got to be able to go over both flanks. That's Sumigeshi there has been threatening all the way through hasn't it and uh, if you have a look at the landing see exactly where she lands there and it's on her side the top half don't look at the bottom half it's the torso and where that lands if it's the side 90 degrees then it's uh, a wazari and that is a clear wazari yeah it was sumiyageshi attack number four wasn't it that came up with the goods nice grip as well here yeah, from stevenson she's had enough practice on it There'll be time enough for Yelisaveta Litvinenko, but today wasn't the day. It was Karen Stevenson who came up with, with the win. Well, this one should be an absolute cracker because uh, you've got the lady on form. Yeah, Anna Maria Wagner of Germany, the current world champion, goes up against former world champion Myra Aguiar of Brazil. It'll be Wagner in the white Jirogi, Jirogi Aguiar in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Lubomir Peter of Australia. Here's Neil. Well, again, Aguiar going for another Olympic Games, the third Olympic run. And uh, Anna Maria Wagner, she is the current world champion uh, in white for Germany coming out here and uh, she's had a great run through just hip on every match Aguiar had beautiful hip on in the semi-final and she's starting to come back to form and uh, you always see it uh, I think on the second and third Olympic cycle it's always a, a little bit of a, a problem because you've got a different approach different idea you're not quite as hungry maybe or it's a different kind of hunger Wagner, she's been coming out as if she is absolutely the world champion current and she's fighting the former world champion here in this final. So look out for Wagner because uh, she's full of confidence, full of it. On the other side of that, don't write off Aguiar either. Wagner in white, Aguiar in blue. So it'll be left against right here, and uh, straight away Aguiar takes the chance. She does Uchimata as well, and uh, I think she's got to. So they'll both be trying to get central, <laughs> and they'll, uh, they've will they got to be careful of the Sakeshi, which is uh, uh, a slip of the hip and uh, use of the hands to turn your own momentum against you. So as you come up, try and come up the middle there, you just slip the hip across, and uh, it's possible that you can throw yourself now, Wagner. Oh, she's caught her. Look at that. Oh, dear me. And uh, Tanio Tosh there takes her back onto her side. Can she wrap her up now and finish this off? No idea why she didn't go for that. I, I, she didn't want to know down there, and I don't know why. 
Look at this Tanio Tosh, beautifully taken there. And uh, the former world champion goes over for a Wazari. And they're not even, well, one minute hasn't gone yet. Wagner's 2-1 up before coming into this match on their head-to-heads. And I, I can only assume that that, uh, well, Wagner hasn't been at the top for, for that long, so it's been on uh, Aguiar's comeback trail, I think. And that's what a lot of the champions do. They'll do an Olympic uh, Games, then they'll have a little uh, rest. They'll come off it for a bit and then uh, come back and then start to build their world rankings back up again. She's still at 14, though, uh, uh, Aguiar. Well, it poses a few questions, uh, a few p uh, problems when you've got a right against left. Uh, Wagner, extreme right there. Uh, and uh, Aguiar, what a beautiful technique that was. Good Uchimata, really good. The way she picked the leg there went up, but look at the uh, length and uh, how tall Wagner is. Wagner just uh, rides it easily and, uh, like I say, got to be careful of the Sakeshi. And that's why I was pointing out the stature of Litvinenko, you know, coming up as a junior. That's the thing that you're looking at because if they can use all the tools that they've got to their advantage, they're going to end up in uh, Wagner's position because you know she had the similar kind of look early on you weren't quite sure whether she was going to make it to the top but everything suggested that she had all the tools um, to take her that far that was the first time that Aguiar changed to the other flank and uh, Wagner almost got caught and you're right, you know, you, you know, don't you? You can see a, a fighter when they're coming through the juniors and you go, and we saw one, didn't we? 60 kilos here, young Georgian. And um, you looked at him and you thought, yeah. there's one for the future, without a doubt. Three times an Olympic bronze medalist, Myra Aguiar. London, Rio, Tokyo. It's got to be painful, isn't it? You go three times. So I said it was her third run in, it's her fourth then, yeah, uh, obviously, it's her fourth Olympic uh, run and still up there and round about fighting the... Oh, oh that's it, it's going to be... Uh, look at the top half uh, for the landing, they will have a look at that, and, uh, it uh, was not quite I think, but um, it wasn't far off. And it's top torso, not quite, just not quite up to the uh, 90 degrees there. Remember, this is the final as well. 34 seconds left on the clock. Aguiar still coming forwards. Has she got it underneath there? Look at the uh, grimace on the face there, looking for the strangle. Is the uh, jacket underneath Aguiar's She's neck? had the tap. I thought I saw the left hand tapping. Yeah, it, uh, it's one of those, isn't it? Sometimes you, if you start pointing to your hand yeah. there, it can look as if you're tapping up. Trying to point out that uh, it was maybe the, they're uh, ag yeah, against the neck or against the face, should I say, not against the neck. That's it now. Very well played there by the current world champion. I thought she looked great all day. Terrific. Very confident. And uh, don't forget that was against uh, a three-time Olympic medalist and a former world champion. Great performance. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see later on where the competition's going to come from. Malonga maybe if she's, you know, around there. Hamada, if she's still around, depends who the, the Japanese decide to send out. Be good to look and see where her losses have been.
Do you know, I think the uh, I think it'll be interesting as well, uh, Shell, because I, I think that when you look at when they're a champion and they're the current champion, they come out with a kind of an air of uh, importance and also, you know, it's a natural uh, I'm on top of my game kind of uh, feeling that they give and uh, she's been like that all day. I don't think that there's one time she's walked out there and had any inkling that, uh, you know, possibility of losing. Lovely Tani Otosh there. That's, for me, that's where her problem is going to be. It's with the Japanese. Um, ten matchups, eight losses. She's got to crack that one. She's got a great record against everyone else. But when it comes to her matchups with the Japanese, it has not gone that well from all the way back to 2015. Gonna have to tidy that one up. Right, I think we've got the awarding ceremony coming up shortly for the men in the under 90 kilo category. The athletes are ready and waiting down at the far end of the competition hall. Yes, we come now to the awarding ceremony for men in the under 90 kilo category. The medals are being presented by the president of the Georgian Judo Federation, Mr. Georgi Atabegashvili. The first of the bronze medals goes to Bukai Shoichiro of Japan. There's a bronze medal also for Maxime Engayo Pambu of France. Silver medal goes to Todd Christian of Hungary. And the gold medal goes to Becca Gviniashvili of Georgia. The crowd absolutely love him, don't they? And they love the fact that it's all about excitement and well he did he did have the most amazing day and like um it was pointed out earlier the finesse of the ashiwaza and the use of the ashiwaza was sublime and look at that at the end great sportsmanship there from both Tot of Hungary, a real gentleman. And now the national anthem of Georgia. Vinayashvili on good form today. Back to uh, some of his best judo. It's not the last time that we're going to he hear that anthem today, Neil, I tell you. They've had a great run, haven't they? It's been a great tournament for them. Mukai and Ngiab Hambu were the bronze medalists. Tot was the silver medalist and it was Vinayashvili who took the gold. Handshakes, sorry, handshakes and hugs all round. 
I'm going to say it's absolutely jammed to the rafters, this place. Uh, so many people absolutely loving their judo. Well, there's more to come. And we're going to begin with the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 100 kilo category. Ibek Serikbaev of Kazakhstan goes up against Otabek Turaboyev of Uzbekistan. It'll be Serikbaev in the white jadogi, Turaboyev in the blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Roberta Kiolia of Italy. I was talking to Ilyas Iliadis, the Uzbek coach, the former Olympic champion, world champion, and uh, I said, um, quite a good day then. <laughs> he, he said, it's going to get better, he said. <laughs> and he was uh, full of it. He, uh, having a great time as the coach, and uh, he's uh, changed this team, hasn't he? You can honestly say that. He's got so many contesting. He's got two in almost every weight category, actually. Yes, you get the impression that they are a lot more competitive than they have been previously. And maybe Neil's point about it's the numbers. You know, you can look back at World Championships and Olympic Games and you say, oh, there was one here and one here and one here and one here. But now... You've got quite a number. Serik Bayev in white here, just having his head dominated at the moment. Bit of pressure being applied from Turaboy. He's got to be careful not to duck his head underneath here. Going to be a penalty, that's for yeah. sure. He, he felt the pressure just blocked him out, didn't he? Oh, so to Kosoto! And a Wazari! Gets a Wazari for it. Nice combination that was. Now, see what his uh, transition's like as well. That was a lovely combination. Have a look how he dominates the head. Osodogari then attacks the uh, far leg there for the Kosoto and uh, takes him flat on his back. Didn't quite get the impetus for the, uh, for the Ippon. Going again. Ooh. To the bear then absolutely dominating this uh, match. Just needs to uh, carry on what he's doing, really. Doesn't need to change any of the tactics. That right hand goes on first, then the left hand goes higher. Dominates the head and he's looking for that front leg. He's with Shido Shido now, I think. So it was uh, holding too long on the opposite side. So we said we can do that as long as we attack immediately or almost immediately as part of the same movement. You've got to be attacking. Yeah, he just looked as though he'd settled on that grip and wasn't moving from it. Now he's got the grip that he wants. Oh, so to Gary. And there's the great man himself. He's not actually in the chair this time. Ilyas Iliadis, Olympic and world champion. Now in charge of the Uzbek team.
I can honestly say I don't think Serik Bayev has done anything. Has he? Uh, hasn't attacked yet. Yeah, he's, he's struggling here, and he's already got two penalties up against him. Might be all over here. Gets away with it this last time. Last chance. Tiraboy has been really clever here just to try and close him down and make him look passive. It doesn't matter if Tiraboy picks up a penalty, just as long as Serik Bayev picks up one as well. He's already on two. Both coaches just being asked to calm it down. Yeah, and coach only during the mate. Yeah, it's not like a lot, a lot of sports. I mean, some sports, tennis, for example, you can't coach at all. Yeah, you're and up that's in the stands. It. Oh, no. I just I, got was, off it. Yeah, just. Uh, actually, it, it, it collapsed as opposed to Serik Bayev getting off it. Because if, if we say that Serik Bayev got off it, then we'll have to admit that he did something during the contest. That's going to be a shido, isn't it, uh, to repay it? <laughs> because he hasn't done anything. He really hasn't done anything. Oh, there's an attack. And he almost gets countered. And Turaboyev, happy to engage his Kazakh opponent in some near was up. Needs to, yes, go for it. Really go for it. And then he yeah. can waste a few valuable seconds. And there we go. I don't He's going to go it's over. Almost He's going to do it. Yes. <laughs> oh, just, just at the time, well, save yourself the trouble. We'll go with the Wazari win as opposed to the Wazari Awazeti upon which it would have been had the Osaikomi been secured. Didn't need it in the end. It's Otabek Turaboyev of Uzbekistan who takes the first of the bronze, no, second, beg your pardon, second of the, no. I'm right. First of the bronze medals in the under 100 kilo category. I'm trying to rush things through there. So just managed to mug him, didn't he? Really? Just uh, he was uh, dominant with the grip, and if you're dominant with the grip, then you need to attack off it. This man here, Tudebev, absolutely was attacking all the time yeah, got the one score that was all that was needed he never really shut up shop though he was still in the contest it was just that Serik Bayev never came to the party did he there was the Osoto Kosoto great combination a bit of a roll to it didn't it so uh, it didn't actually thump the shoulders into the mat yeah that's why there was our eight We've got the second of the bronze medal contest coming up now. Daniel Herbst of Germany goes up against Ilya Sulemanidze of Georgia. It'll be Herbst in the white jadogi, Sulemanidze in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Ramzid inside of, of Uzbekistan. Can't keep them off the map now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Sulemanidze, surprise to you that he's not... Um not in the final, I, I think we kind of expected him to be, didn't we? Yeah, he had the one slip, didn't he? That was the number one seed this morning. But it was 
his teammate who did for him, Beriashvili. Lasha Gudjigiani walking out with him. Gudjigiani is unrecognizable these days as the super heavyweight from days gone by. He really has slimmed down and really looking good. A little bit like um, Andreas Tulzer from Germany also really he, he slimmed down. He lost a lot of weight yeah. as well. Well, and of course the great Yamashita and they both Saito. Look, and yeah, they they both look very good. Herbst of Germany, left-handed, really awkward in his uh, previous match. Solomonidzi kind of looks as if he's uh, a junior fighter coming out to, to fight the seniors, but uh, believe me, he's not. Uh, he just waits his uh, moment then he'll just explode in yeah just 20 years of age Solomon Idzi we're just uh, looking at uh, his profile here he's only young that's why he looks like a junior when he comes out because he is <laughs> <laughs> well only just I suppose he's just just out of juniors but the last couple of years he has been the kid, new kid, on the block. Herbst looking for the Uchimata. Well, he gets the uh, submission there, uh, Herbst, and uh, well, we just looked away for a, an absolute second there, millisecond, and Sulemanidze is having a, a little bit of a judo lesson today. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Well, was a crowd silencer. So. Yeah, everybody went silent. I thought, oh well, did he get the shimmy was it? But uh, yeah, looks like he did. Daniel Herbst then. Almost apologetic. Yeah. Herbst, wasn't he? Oh, sorry, mate. I know no, it's your I'm home so, I'm crowd. Sorry I but did yeah. it. <laughs> I know your mum's watching, but <laughs> yeah. maybe Daniel Daniel's mum is watching. Maybe. Anyway, he takes it rather unexpectedly against the favorite there the number one seed this morning as well Ilya Silomenidze he came out all smiles didn't he looked fairly happy didn't quite end up that way seeing Aggie was uh, the technique and uh, then he's down in a shimmy was a position he's right the way under the neck there look at that and he couldn't sure, uh, do yeah. anything but uh, submit still remains the Achilles heel for Georgian judo with the groundwork yeah yes he absolutely 100 percent 100 percent you know when you can have someone who is as devastating as Ilya Sulemanidze go over in such a fashion you know just goes to show number one seed he didn't have a good day today I have to say no. but uh, no like you say it's um if, if I was going to improve, or if I was a coach coming in there to improve them, I'd yeah, get them doing their wiser drills, without a doubt. We come now to the final of the under 100 kilo category. Georgi Beriashvili of Georgia goes up against Anise Sanablidze. It's an all Georgian head-to-head here. -head Beriashvili in the white jadogi, Senablidze in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Katharina Marzog of Germany. Well, although we probably uh, won't have a head-to-head -head with these two, they've probably met a few thousand times, either in training or uh, in Georgian championships. So get ready for that. They might just know each other very, very well. It's 
So the young pretender doesn't even get a medal. Uh, Billy S. Billy comes out, he's going to be wearing white. And uh, Sinablitze of Georgia, who's ranked 14 in the world, is coming out wearing blue. It, that's a really good point, Neil. You've got the, the number one seed from Georgia, and you've got an all Georgian final. The number one seed, not anywhere near it. Well, I say not anywhere near it, but having to settle for fifth place. Here we go. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how this one goes. Always is interesting. Sometimes they absolutely let fly, let go. And uh, other times, they just cancel each other out. No, oh, he's looking for the Uranagi. Oh, now then. That's going to be an Ippon. That was massive. Right onto the point of his shoulder. Santa Blitze there. Wow, when we slow this down in slow motion, you'll see, I mean, his head virtually touched the mat. Did it touch? Uh, they're going to have a look at it, but uh, have a look at the shoulders here and see where they touch. Nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Uh, just uh, the shoulders touched. Now, it's weather. Uh, it, top of the shoulders, it's meant to be most of the back. So actually, with the top of the shoulders here, I think they're going to give it a Wazari instead. <laughs> they might just change it. Yes. No, they haven't. Large, largely on the back. Largely on the back, and that was top of said. the shoulders. And it was. Yeah. It largely on the back, and all the other elements were absolutely in there. Force, oh, yeah. control, impetus. Yeah, I know there'll be yeah. loads of people going, of course it was Ippon, of course it was. You look at the rules, and it states that uh, shoulder to shoulder is, is a wazari, and it's most of the back that's got to be uh, covered. But I think they dare not change that. And look at that. <laughs> Gold medalist from yesterday. Lasher liked the look of that, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and this uh, Santa Blidze it is, who comes up with a devastating technique. He was the number two seed this morning. Beriashvili was the number four. Well, I'm sure that's going to be uh, under discussion. I'm good with that. Side on, maybe even better. Largely, largely, that's what it says. Yes, largely it does, yeah. on the back. It does. Of course, the, um, well, it'll be interesting just to see what everybody thinks. Well, there's always that freeze frame, isn't there? And if you freeze it there, and say, okay, let's let's measure. Well, how many inches off largely would you say that well, was? I think the other way to look at it is that if you have an overthrow to the side, yeah. if you have an overthrow, then it overthrows. Yeah. It doesn't matter how large it is. Yeah. It's still an overthrow. Anyway, um, it, I'm it okay will be with that. great uh, uh, for a discussion, and uh, look forward to uh, discussing that one with them. Brilliant technique, mind. Oh, dearie me. Talk about Uranagi, that was huge. We've got another awarding ceremony coming up now, Neil. It is the awarding ceremony for the women in the under 78 kilo category. The medals are going to be presented by the International Judo Federation Events Director, Dr. Lisa Allen. Did you not present medals yesterday? She did, indeed she did. Sport She's for busy. Choice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> busy, busy, and a smile on her face as well. She knows we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, she did. It was almost as she was looking yeah. at you there, going, I know what you're talking about. First of the bronze medals goes to Karen Stevenson of the Netherlands. There's a bronze medal also for Natalie Powell of Great Britain. The silver goes to Myra Aguiar of Brazil, but the gold medal goes to Anna Maria Wagner of Germany.
looked like a world champion today, fought like a world champion. And uh, I think if you asked her, you, you'd get her saying that she uh, felt like a world champion as well. Beat the uh, former world champion and three-time Olympic medalist in a really well-contested fire final. Nice Tanio Tosh to finish it off. And now the national anthem of Germany. smile there as well for everybody to appreciate happy days yeah Stevenson and Powell were the bronze medal winners it was Agia who took the silver Wagner, the gold. Coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contests in the plus 78 kilo category. Sofio Somkishvili of Georgia goes up against Leah Fontaine of France. It will be Somkishvili in the white Jadogi Fontaine in blue. However, Fontaine picked up an injury in a previous contest. So our referee, Christia, uh, Cosmin Christia of Romania, just has to go through the formalities, invite Sofio Somkishvili onto the tatami to give the Georgian super heavyweight the contest and a bronze medal so no contest for Somkishvili well, you said today. that <laughs> yeah. good if she ends up on the rostrum but I mean she did fight well in her previous match yeah. actually yeah. so uh, credit to her I mean first time that we've seen a Georgian heavyweight on the uh, on the main rostrum well we do have a second bronze medal contest coming up in the plus 78 kilo category and that features Camilla Berlikash of Kazakhstan she's up against Marit Camps of the Netherlands it'll be Berlikash in the white Jadogi Camps in blue and the referee in the middle for this one is Elizabeth Gonzalez of Mexico Bera Clash of uh, Kazakhstan uh, wearing white camps Netherlands in blue here Bela Cash coming out here world ranked 40 camps with a higher world ranking of 19 Dutch have had a good tournament they have really I like the fact there are a few countries here they get their 
their people sorted out. They send quite a few out just to uh, sort out who's going to go through the uh, qualification stages. And it uh, all starts in Mongolia a few weeks' time. Just having her sleeve dominated here, Berlikash. Camps needs to take advantage of it. Just having a little look at that uh, front leg there, right to right, and uh, see who's tempted to have a little uh, wrap around the leg. Both on the sleeves and you can see a lot of negative stuff on the sleeve. I must say, actually, that uh, we haven't seen a lot of sleeve to sleeve, have we, holding it down. You know, there's, uh, it's not something we've seen a lot of in the last three days. Very true. I hadn't thought about that. Chance of the Maki Komi there. Got camps into a difficult position and now going to try and work something on the ground. But she's thinking about it. Where shall I go? Mm, too late. You've got to have that sorted out before you get down there, haven't you? Well, I think that's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, to, to know exactly what you want in groundwork. And uh, the good Newaza people, the good groundwork people, they know exactly what they want. They dig for it and they search for it and they hunt for it. Yesterday, I think we saw from the ladies, especially from the ladies, actually, not from the men for sure, but from the ladies uh, categories, we saw some good transitions in. A lot of contests won by Shimiwazas and uh, Konsetsu Wazas, but uh, not so much today. We're, I was saying that, there, there was a really nice one, wasn't there, in the under 90 kilograms. One sheet of a piece, so they'll need to put something in fairly substantial. Now she's going to go for it here, Burley Clash. Still think they're going to go for that front leg. There are not many athletes who can te telegraph the Maki Komi and still bring it off. But if there are, then they're always in the super heavyweights because the, the, the reaction time is a lot slower. It's a, yeah, it's it's a, a bigger mass to move, isn't it? A lot of uh, winding throws as well. Yeah. You know, it's easier for them not to have the second or the lapel hand on and uh, to use the uh, weight and the momentum yeah. there to yeah. rotate might be all over here might be a shido for Ooh, Burley just cash. Burley cash. yes yeah, so two shidos a piece next one and it'll be uh, all finished if they don't want to attack then they, they will get them off there they they won't let them just uh, tap away at the legs they've got to go in full-blooded and that's all they're doing at the moment just Ooh. tapping at the legs Early Cash got away with that breaking of the grip. Yeah, and, and again. It's got to be it yeah. now. It's all over now. So somebody, who's going to get it? Yeah. I think it'll be Burley Cash. She's the one that pulled away from it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Burley Cash gets it and uh, Camps gets the uh, bronze medal. Lackluster contest. And, uh, well, she's thinking, well, what did I have to do? To And all she needed to do was attack, really. I can't go to help out on this occasion. I normally go and explain the rules to our coaches. I like them to know why it is their athletes have been given a penalty. But on this occasion, I'm sorry, but... Just leave it. I'm leaving that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to the bronze medal contest and you don't know. You need to go away and do some work. Yeah, I think if you haven't put a proper attack in, you haven't rotated. There was no rotation. 
nobody, uh, not even an Osoto there. So, uh, yeah, you're going to get three Shidos, aren't you? Well, we've still got hopes of a good final. And we come now to the final of the plus 78 kilo category. Julia Tolafua of France goes up against Nihil Chekruhu of Tunisia. It'll be Tolafua in the white Jadogi, Chekruhu in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Jean-Claude Jimby of Gabon. Well, Tolafua has uh, come out best for their head-to-heads and Shikruhu, here's Tolafua. They've been putting um, their top heavyweights out, haven't they, uh, all the time, the French. And well, Tolafua is ranked four in the world at the moment and uh, this lady here ranks seven. Shikrahu, only one win out of there. I think it's last four contests, is it, or five? I can't uh, I remember. Tolafua in red, uh, in white, sorry, and uh, Shikrahu in blue. I haven't heard that for a while. No, exactly. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. And... Nice little as she was there, just taking her opponent down. Diashi and uh, just manages to uh, turn onto a front, didn't she? Quite nimble on her feet. But nice little Diashi there. Three, three times Nahil Chakra, who has gone up against Julia Tolafua, and she's lost on the last two occasions. First time out, beat her at the Grand Prix in. Tunis back in 2018 and she lost to her at the Paris Grand Slam um, in 2019 and this year's Paris Grand Slam earlier in the year wow well, almost clubbed her then didn't she I think looking for the uh, Makikomi, but uh, needs to get that arm up over the top. Very rangy here, Telefua just using her range just to keep her at bay. She'll have to close it down at some stage so that she can attack. Shido a piece. Referee just saying, uh, let's have more action. Thundering right arm over the top there to control the head. Now is she going to use it? Looking at that uh, front leg there thinking shall I a couple of attacks and uh, it would change the whole thing here because two Shidos would go up so they're both going to get Shido Shido again so two Shidos apiece I'm sure there's uh, people out there, well, they've just given it to one. So, Sheikh Rahu got it. Yes, Tolafua perhaps looking the... More aggressive. Yeah. Or at least wanting, look, looking as though she wanted something to, to happen. Whereas Sheikh Rahu looked as though she was trying to stop anything from transpiring. Well, she went against the arm there, did she? Luckily for her, Tolafua was pulling away or else she would have gone against the arm. That was poor execution there. It really looked as though she was going to go against the arm. 
Yeah, it did. It, uh, and it's when they rotate there and uh, the arms virtually straight anyway. But uh, now something's going to happen here. Sheikh Rahu. Her attacks. Uh, so Tolafua has got to follow. She is holding that arm, actually. <laughs> I think it did go against it. Throws the big right arm over the top there. Is she going to use it? She needs to get the hips across now. be Shido Shido in a second then it'll be all over just uh, really neither fighter has uh, thrown any big techniques that's the first one we've seen now then did she counter her? that was uh, well Telefua attacks Sheikh Rahu counters did any of uh, Sheikh Rahu's back touch the mat when she countered did she counter in time or do you count the uh, Uchimata from Telefua So Wuzari, and it goes to Tolafua. She's the one that did the Uchimata here. And uh, yes, it was yeah, uh, ending. Uh, yeah. absolutely. Shegra, who's uh, back, hit the ground first. And that was it. So Tolafua wins it on that Uchimata, the first proper attack that we've seen. No good looking over, then well, you're not it's going to no change it. Yeah, and not only that, but uh, if it was a counter, then it wouldn't have counted anyway. She has to realise that her back touched the mat. So uh, any kind of uh, counter, you can't use the mat and your back cannot touch the mat in order to get your opponent over. But uh, anyway, Tolafu just does enough. Three to one now the head-to-head -head. we'll get to have another look at that as well well like I say here's the Uchimata and uh, Shekra who of course decides to do a counter but uh, they normally go off the attacker you've got to remember that the attacker never lost the grip look at the uh, uh, grip and so they count it as her technique what um, Sheikh Rahu fails to realise is that if it was a counter, her back touched the mat first. So absolutely no score. The only question was, if it was her counter, then it's nothing to anybody. And uh, the possibility of that. Yeah, I think that the counter, the attempt at the counter, came on the way down and the reason for going down was the Ujimata. So yeah, I'm going, but now I'm going to try a counter. Well, how did you get going? You got going from the Ujimata. So we got yeah. to count the Ujimata. Well, it was Ujimata, uh, yeah. was Ari or yes. nothing. And uh, it absolutely wasn't uh, anything for Sheikh Rahu, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. We have the awarding ceremony for the men in the under 100 kilo category coming up next. There are the four medal winners, all resplendent in their white jidogi. The medals are being presented by the Georgian Judo Federation Vice President, Mr. Tamaz Navariani. The first of the bronze medals goes to Daniel Herbst of Germany. There's a bronze medal also for Utabek Turoboyev of Uzbekistan.
silver medal goes to Diogo Beriashvili of Georgia. But the gold medal goes to Onissa Sanablidze of Georgia. Yeah, I think his uh, final throw will uh, be under discussion when they uh, come out of here. It certainly was a massive Uranagi, huge. What a technique against your own club, mate. And, uh, well, it's going to be a gold or silver for, uh, for Georgia, but... Uh, Wow, he did that in style, didn't he? And now the national anthem of Georgia. Herbst and Suroboyev were the bronze medal winners. It was Beriashvili who picked up the silver and Sanablidze the gold medal. Such good sportsmanship. Look at that. These um Youngsters absolutely having a ball, uh, and all the stars, of course, all being absolutely mobbed by them. We have one more weight category to bring you. This is the plus 100 kilo category, and the first of the bronze medal contests features Joseph Tehek of France. He's up against uh, Shokru back. Tirov of Uzbekistan. It's Tehek in the white Janogi. Baki Tirov in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Vladimir Nutsubidze of Georgia. That's it, Tehek. Just the one slip earlier on today that put him into the bronze medal contest. So too, one slip for Baki Yorov towering over his coach there yeah I don't think they've been warming up together out the back there have they no, I don't think so not gonna help him much is he <laughs> might need two of him <laughs> well of course the uh, Uzbek have the chance of a gold in this category as well Yusupov in the final we'll see him later Yes, Terhek, the only outsider from the Georgian-Uzbek grouping. All the other athletes in, this, in these medal matches come from either Georgia or Uzbekistan. Terhek has just snuck in there. Well, I often wonder who the great Teddy René used to train with and uh, who were his training partners and... How many he had, whether he uh, got people in from abroad and 
I mean, these guys have to come through, don't they? I mean, uh, the, the, they must be training with him all the time. I very much regret to say, or I, I hate to break it to the French, but having had a monopoly on the super heavyweight category for so long, those days have now come to an end. Yeah, it's, um, I think that's what happens, isn't it? When you have somebody that dominates a weight category, it happened in Japan with uh, the 48 kilos category. And um, of course, <clears throat> they dominate for so long and then people don't go out. And then all of a sudden, lots of people go out. 60 kilos as well with Nomura. Nomura had yeah, his, exactly the same. his way with it. And then not till Takata Narahisa at these last Olympic Games did they come back to take the gold medal at an Olympic Games. Athens in 2004 was the last time that they'd won that weight category. We then had, who was it in Beijing? Shei was it? From the Republic of Korea, 2008. 2012, it was Arsene Galstian, I think, in London. 16, it was Beslan Budranov. And now the Japanese at last can bask in the glory of having another 60 kilo champion. Seems like forever, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Nomura, I mean, name from the past, but the Olympic Games every four years, so you only get one shot every four years. Terek has no chance here. When he turns in here, he, the, the hands come off immediately. Katarov, just uh, that little bit uh, too strong for him. Back patch of uh, back to Yorov. Oh, that's again. Uh, that's. Well, that's just a drop that that's a shido for Terek doesn't matter how much he plays on the fingers in the eye there it's got to be a surely a shido Two feet out. <laughs> Wasn't far off, just managed to uh, stay in. Well, he hasn't really attacked himself, has he, back to Yorov? Easily defending there against Terek. He's too strong for him, but is he doing anything himself? He's going to attack now. I think one big attack here with the hips across and uh, be all over. Osodo now. Osodo Gary, it wasn't far off. And he's gone again for it. Tries the Ashiguruma. All over. Terek uh, gets the third penalty. So another medal there for Uzbekistan. Back to Yurov wins by uh, default and so uh, they will have two people on the rostrum 
Yes, unfortunate that uh, Tehek really didn't come to the party. We've seen it a couple of times in the final block today. This time round, disappointment for the Frenchman. back to Yorov, the first medal in the Grand Slam. Uh, congratulations to him. Well, we've still got a couple of contests to go. The first of which happens to be the second of the bronze medal contests in the plus 100 kilo category. Levani Matyashvili of Georgia goes up against teammate Onissa Bukhadze. It'll be Matyashvili in the white Jadogi Bukhadze in blue. The referee in the middle of this one is Matthew Bataille of France. Well, as usual, um, at this stage, we kind of praying now that it all livens it, itself up a little bit. Uh, the crowd might just get them going here. Home crowd, family up there. Levani <laughs> Matiasvili of Georgia in white here, and Anise Bugdhadzi of Georgia is in blue. Remember that their former world champion isn't in this uh, tournament today. And they've got another one in the final. Yep. <laughs> they haven't done that badly, have they? Well, they definitely know each other. I mean, all these heavyweights must be fighting with each other all the time. Matthias really has put a bit of weight on. He wasn't always that heavy I suppose it really doesn't matter that much when you are but he's pretty nimble on his feet yeah. isn't he so yeah. uh, it could manner you know it may mean the difference yeah, a couple of kilos here or there for this kind of weight but I think I suspect it's a, a few more than that <laughs> looks like 10 to me Well, the grips keep coming off all the time here. There's one Shido apiece already, and another stalemate contest. This could liven up a little bit different from previous contests. I think they're both keen to you know, get something on the board. It's the question of getting past the grips and one of them launching one of those big attacks. Adios Philly uh, keeps uh, snatching the, the grip off. He doesn't want two hands on. I don't think either of them do. Second one to Matthias Villi, just drops on his uh, knees there, just to avoid any kind of uh, possibility of a throwing action from Bugadzi. Well, I don't think we've seen one big technique yet, not one.
now Bugazzi. Bugazzi's the one that's taken the initiative, that's for sure. Matthias Villi not too far off getting a third penalty here. They'll get him off if they don't want to fight. Look at his feet there, caught on the edge. Two, two Shido's now going to go Bagadzi. So uh, now one more mistake and uh, it'll just uh, end by default. Now it's Bagadzi backing him up. That's certainly where I'd put him. Now starting to uh, get a little bit of movement. Wow. Well, if you're going to give a, another one, another penalty, who would you give it to? <laughs> oh, now then, that was one technique. Well, did he get the Wazari? So he's saying there that he got the landing there for the Wazari. Not so sure he did, but... Uh, I thought it was too, too much onto the front, personally, but... Uh, hmm. Not quite enough. The commission, however, Bukadze picks up a third penalty, and it's Matthias Villi who takes it. All over, a bit lackluster to say the least, and um, well, very difficult. Crowd uh, not too happy about that because uh, they want to see action, as we all do. No big celebration from Matiashvili. I don't think he had a great deal to celebrate. Well, that was about the closest uh, that we've got came to any kind of technique, wasn't it? And I think that's why they uh, said, OK, enough's enough. So another medal for Georgia. This time to Levani Matiashvili. And there's a chance for yet another. This time it's in the final of the plus 100 kilo category. Alisha Yusupov of Uzbekistan goes up against Gela Zalishvili of Georgia. It'll be Yusupov in the white jadogi, Zalishvili in blue, and the referee in the middle. And this one is Roberta Kiolia of Italy. Well, Roberta Chilia keeps control of uh, everybody out there, believe me. Ilias Iliadis there, shouting and telling his, uh, uh, his player that uh, what he wants, what he's got to do. that um, live in the crowd up didn't it well let's hope uh, it stays that way so here we go Yusupov in white here Zalashvili of Georgia in blue and it's the last contest of this Grand Slam tournament
No small task ahead of Zalashvili here because only a win <laughs> will do it for this crowd. Left against right. Look how they peck away at that sleeve there. Shido, Shido. Not gripping up. Got to grip up. Got to go for it. Now two hands on. Both of them have got two hands on. Yusupov trying to get that left arm over the uh, back there. Now he's got it underneath the armpit here. Now trying to come across. First attack to Yusupov. Going to try big hips across. Got to be careful though because if he gets it wrong with that arm especially tied up, then he will get taken back. Two Shidos. It's going to be a, another Shido apiece. Just one there. Zalash really gets it. <laughs> And the crowd didn't like that, did they? But uh, kind of agree there. Yusupov is the one that's attacking. Watch out for this Kosoto onto this front leg. Now it's going to happen. Oh, what's going to happen now? Close. He's looking for the Kosoto. Massive pickup. Somebody's going to go. Crowder on their feet. Who started it? That's what you've got to say. And it's definitely Yusupov that started it. Zalash really didn't direct it to, to uh, warrant his score. Quite rightly so too. Crowd probably just a little bit confused. Am I being polite there? <laughs> <laughs> Two penalties picked up by Zalashvili. It's a minute and a oh, half. Oh, it's going to go again. Here we go again. They're going to go for it, these two. I think it's going to end in a massive hip arm. And it's a Wazari. Zalashvili gets the Wazari. Something was going to happen, wasn't it? Well, you come to Tbilisi. You're in the final with one of their super heavyweights and you wrap your arms around him. Well, I said he's got to be careful of that arm around the back there yeah. because if he doesn't get his hips right the way across, that arm is trapped. And that's even with the great Iliadis in your chair. <laughs> yeah, and he's not going to be happy with that. He's going to want to finish it off. Iliadis so would have warned him about that. <laughs> If, if he needed any warning. zalashvili has got to be careful because he's still got the two penalties. Yusupov is going for it again. Kosa, oh, it's, it's all over. <laughs> it's all over. Zalashvili turns it against him and uh, Yusupov just thought, I've got to go for this. So Zalashvili finishes it by Ippon. It's the ideal way to finish a tournament. So often we see it finish like this with a massive upon with the heavyweight men. Well, if the under 60 kilo category had some something super and the under 73 kilo had something special, this was the icing on the cake for Georgia. Yeah, Zalash really a bit of a showman as well. He's, uh, he's going to the crowd. Quieten up just for a second. Okay, now you can go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll orchestrate this. But he did go for it. I, I mean, he, he did. He uh, hooked up with a Georgian. There was the Wazari. And then he went for it again and uh, got countered with the same technique. Both arms underneath. 
big smile on his face says it all. Went for the Kosoto. In the end, gets countered with the same technique. They were both looking for the same. And that look says it all, doesn't it? He said, well, I did go for it, but uh, yeah, he's just that little bit too strong. Yeah, I think your point earlier on about the Georgians being accustomed to a particular style of close in combat fighting that comes from their own style of wrestling, which presumably, I'm, I'm just assuming that Zelash, uh, Zelash really has been involved in that at some stage, because most of them have. Uh, Chiadoba, I think it's called. Um, you know, he may be more used to that kind of um, situation. And Yusupov wasn't able to overcome him. Good finish from Gela Zalashvili. And exactly as Neil said, he was the one controlling the crowd at the end. He was the one geeing them up. And it was the best way to finish. On a high for the Georgian team. One of the strongest teams in the world and one of the most difficult places to come and win, win a medal here in Tbilisi and speaking of medals we've got an awarding ceremony coming up now things will go a little bit quiet here because it's the women in the plus 78 kilo category the medals are being presented by the International Judo Federation education education and coaching director mr. Mohammed Marija Get things under control again <laughs> Gotta get your breath back, haven't you? Great way to finish. We've, we've had three highs. Every single day, the high has been um, a Georgian gold medal win. The first of the bronze medals in the plus 78 kilo category goes to Marit Camps of the Netherlands. There's a bronze medal also for Sofio Sonkishvili of Georgia. Silver medal goes to Nihil Chekruhu of Tunisia. But the gold medal goes to Julia Tolofua of France. Yes, in the end, uh, just decided on, on penalties. Uh, in fact, um, it was just one score, wasn't it? It was that uh, Uchimata there. A little bit of confusion there from Shikrahu. Shikrahu thought, well, I did dig in to uh, do the counter, but it was either was the Uchimata and Uchimata that scored, or was it uh, no score whatsoever? Uh, because Shikrahu cannot score with a back hit in the ground. And now the national anthem of France. Happy days for the four medal winners. Camps and Sonkishvili were the bronze medal winners. It was Chaker who, who took the silver. And the gold medal went to Tolafua. One more medal ceremony to bring you and then well just before that we're going to have a highlights package
come now to the awarding ceremony for the men in the plus 100 kilo category. The medals are being presented by the International Judo Federation Head Refereeing Director, Mr. Armen Bagdasarov. The first of the bronze medals goes to Levani Matiashvili of Georgia. There's a bronze medal also for Shokru Pagitirov of Uzbekistan. Silver medal goes to Alshay Yusupov of Uzbekistan. But the gold medal goes to Gela Zalishvili of Georgia. What a way to finish. They appreciate it. Yes, the, the Georgians and the Uzbeks carved up the super heavyweight division, didn't they? Yeah, look at this. We could see it for, uh, quite clearly here, can't we? That. Uh, the arm collapses, the, he just thought, I'm going to go for this, and uh, he did. Came off the worse. Went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, paid the price. Yeah, that got the crowd going, didn't it? And now the best way to close out the host nations tournament is to hear their anthem and that's what we're going to hear now the national anthem of georgia Well, one last family picture then. It was Matyashvili and Baktiyorov who picked up the bronze medals. Yusupov took the silver, but the gold went to Zalishvili. And here with a wrap up on today's action is Neil Adams. Well, what a, an absolutely brilliant way to finish uh, the, this whole tournament with Georgia and their national anthem. And of course, they've had an amazing three days. And like um, Sheldon said, it all ended, didn't it, um, on each day with a Georgia gold medal. And uh, of course, they finished this whole tournament with uh, top of the table, of course. They were top of the table every single day. Uh, so Georgia finished with five golds, four silvers, five bronzes. Look at that. Absolute depth all the way through. They killed it. France came second with two golds, four bronzes. Uh, Republic of Korea, two surprise gold medals there uh, for two new people. Uh, uh, puts them third in the medals. Uh, Germany, Netherlands, Republic of Moldova, Israel and Kosovo all with one gold medal apiece. Brazil, two golds, two bronzes. They're down in ninth place. Spain, two golds, one bronze. Hungary, uh, two golds, uh, sorry, two silvers. 
uh, Uzbekistan one silver, four bronzes. Japan one silver, three bronzes. Uh, Tunisia one silver and uh, no bronzes. But uh, Azerbaijan there with uh, two bronzes. And then we've got uh, Ukraine, Great Britain and Austria all with one bronze apiece. Uh, well, fantastic um, performance uh, from the Georgians. It was a great crowd. It was great hospitality all the way through the three days. We're going to be back uh, with you in Mongolia in two weeks' time. Uh, that's Sheldon and I. Uh, from him and I, uh, it's been great fun. We've had a great uh, time uh, commentating this event. And we'll be with you in a couple of weeks' time. From uh, Sheldon and I, it's goodbye for now.